What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay. This is the final Reseller Fam live show before the event happening March 8th through 10th next month. So thank you guys for joining us. If you want to hop in the call, we will put the link to the chat on Instagram and in the chat below. But why don't we, we introduce ourselves? Today's topic is how much money do you need for eBay? Um, let's go ahead and have everyone introduce themselves first before we get into the topic. Joel, how's it going? How's your week? My week is great. I'm Joel or Helene or whatever you want to call me. I'm one half of the Lister sisters. The other girl on here is my sister. Hey. Noelle, what's going on? How are you? How's your week? Good. It's going well. I'm a little busy with Valentine's Day, school parties and all that, but still making it work. What what's go, what are you doing anything special for Valentine's Day with your boo? Oh no, that doesn't happen with children. No, it doesn't happen with children. Nice. Nope. <laughs> Glenn, Especially. what's going on? Uh, I'm Glenn, YouTube channel Hustler Hacks, and I'm here to talk nothing but budgeting. Perfect. <laughs> That's it. No more. Ken no Hustleby, more. what's going on? What's up, guys? Again, my name is Ken Hustleby. You can find me on Instagram. I got my handy dandy calculator. We'll talk about <laughs> budget. <laughs> Sweet. So, one of the most common questions I get with when it comes to the eBay is, how much money do I need to start? And the short answer is you actually don't need any money to start eBay. You can just sell stuff around the house. You can go to the Craigslist free section. You can get started with any budget. You can spend as much money as you want. Um, I have seen inventories that cost as much as $2 million, um, for stuff, you know, massive hundreds of thousands of items. You know, you can also do consignment where you sell items for other people. There's swap.com with over a million listings and it's a hundred percent consignment. So I don't know. how do you guys, what do you guys think when you, people ask you the question, how much money do you need to start an eBay business? We'll start with Hustleby. We'll go in reverse order. All right. So first, let me now. So uh, seriously, um, I guess, you know, I can relate it to my journey. Um, we really didn't, put in any money, uh, any seed money or any investment money uh, to start with. We basically just thrifted our our uh, closets uh, between me and my wife, and I sold everything that I did not need. So keyword there was anything that we don't need. So everything got sold. Um, I think for, the, for our first two, three weeks, uh, we were just listing everything. So that was that's how we started, and then after we got all the profits from that, then we started uh, buying uh, items. Awesome, Glenn. What do you think? How much money do you need to start an eBay business? Uh, I agree. Like, just sell stuff around the house. I think people want to like just go all in to begin with, and then they really don't even know how eBay works. And I even tell people to like spend money on eBay. Just figure out like how to be a buyer before you're a seller. You know, once you start getting some items in, like how, how do people ship items and kind of learn it that way. And then, but just like small, tiny things to begin with. But um, yeah, I was just selling the same stuff, stuff around my house to begin with. That's pretty much it. All right. Uh, we're going to get into a another topic before we, or I mean, we're going to finish with the Lizard Sisters, but the next question is going to be just so you guys can think about it. How much money do you need to make a full-time living on eBay? But let's start with uh, Joel. How much money do you need to get started with eBay? I have to agree with the boys. None. I started selling uh, my kids' clothes, reselling my kids' clothes and my clothes and everything around the house. And I think the reason, another reason why that's good to do that is like Glenn said, learn how to, um, you need to learn what sells, how quickly it sells, for how much it sells and it's easier to do that with stuff around your house than it is to put money into things and then it's uh not really necessarily know the trends um but if you sell stuff that you already have around the house you can learn a lot just by that and then grow from there and then start spending money to increase yeah. your profit you might as well skip me because it's going to be redundant. <laughs> I agree with everybody. 
Yes. Okay, next question, which is going to be, how much money do you think you need to run an eBay business? Now I'm going to go ahead and guess here because um, it's my show. I can do whatever I want. But I'm just saying, I actually think that you need three times the amount of money that you want to make on eBay to, uh, for example, let's say you want to make $5,000 per month. I think you need $15,000 worth of inventory. And the reason why I say this is I think it's comfortable to double your money every 90 days. And that's buying stuff, hoping to at least double your money and you're moving the item within 90 days. You to give yourself an opportunity for it to sell. I see some people saying, oh, it's been a week. I haven't sold it yet. Don't panic. It's not set up like that. You have to give it an opportunity to marinate in the eBay algorithm, give it a chance to sell. And if you're buying things that should sell in a month, Hopefully within 90 days, it'll move, but you need to have some cushion. Don't quit your job if you only have a couple grand because it's going to be very hard to flip it fast enough to pay your bills. I recommend you do what most of the people in this group did, which is be frugal, let the money reinvest into itself and grow before you quit your job um, because it can get pretty scary if it's your only um, source of income. And I think one huge thing, like Ken can go into it more, but um, the ability to build up a, a amount of inventory listed helps so much because then you don't need to fire sell your items for cash flow. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, um, I, I guess you know, piggybacking off what you just said earlier. I mean, when when you we, when you say like you're you're trying to go full time, right? A lot of people say like they gotta quit their job, go full time on eBay. But I to start with, I didn't have a job at that time. I was actually Ubering, so. One of the things I actually suggest people when they're trying to move into a different, I mean, trying to get go full time is Ubering or driving Lyft or delivering packages for Amazon Lightspeed, something like that, because you can actually schedule your time around it. So when I started, the reason how we were able to build our inventory, because we didn't take any money out. Uh, my wife picked up some babysitting jobs. I actually drove for Uber every weekend, which actually I made around. Uh, depending from 400 to 500 dollars driving uh, uh, 20 20 hours every weekend on uber so i did that every every week and while we were building our ebay during the week because at, you know peak hours for ubers were basically you know at night time where i cannot source or i cannot you know things that i couldn't do anything a lot with ebay so i i did supplement my basic needs by a part time or side job or ubering income so that could be something that, you know, may maybe because people are thinking like, oh, if I quit my job, I go full time and I totally fully rely on eBay's income. No, I had to drive for me and my wife had to pick up side jobs driving for Uber and she had to babysit for at least four months before we could supplement our our uh, income to pay our bills. So I think that's the, the key transition there is, you know, you'll, hit, you'll have a four, I think three to five months of suffering period. You know, yep. this comes from the, the ramen noodle story, the frozen pizza story built into it. And then by that time, I was able to build after that. I was I had like 40,000 in inventory already. And then yep. you know, with us with a sell through rate of, well, let's just say, uh, I mean, at that time, my sell through was faster, 30 percent. So I was selling twelve thousand dollars a month. So that's when I was able to finally do all eBay and not do pick up any side job. I think that that's so important because I started Loki Husky on 420 National Weed Day, right? Um, and that started, I took a loan from myself for, two, for 200 bucks. So you guys know if you guys loan yourself money, you don't have to pay the interest or you can write it off. So I loaned myself a very expensive interest rate of $200 to start uh, Loki Husky in, on 420. And I haven't taken any money out of that for a whole year. And now it's like over $100,000 worth of listed inventory. Of course, that's not a $100,000 profit. That's just a hundred thousand listed, but I can, I don't have to take any money out of it. And it's such a hack. So if you guys can leave money in and let it roll into each other, into itself, you're going to get lucky if you resell all year um, and something magical is going to happen. And I just want to, um, I want to point out something today that was really magical, which was I was watching Casey Neistat and he says he goes all in all day to produce a vlog every day. That's just good. It's not, I mean, excellent or like to as far as his ability goes, he's producing like a five out of 10 piece of content. But the thing is, he's shipping every day. He posted the vlog 
every single day. So when you do that, you get used to showing up every day for work and finishing. He's like, this is the difference. It's kind of rough, but between a loser and a closer is somebody who shows up every single day and does it versus somebody who shows up sometimes and sometimes they don't. When he went all in and started a daily vlog, his following went from 500,000 to 2 million, which is, I mean, obviously 500,000 is already a lot, but he cr started crushing it when he started showing up every single day. I think with your eBay business, it's the same thing. If you show up every day, if you can list, just produce a, a, one good listing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need perfect pictures. You don't need perfect description. You don't need to do all the research. Just get in there and do it every day, and it's going to grow. It's going to work. Um, but you'll you, get good um, at it. But the thing is, to think about somebody as successful as Casey, he's just trying to produce good because he knows how hard it is to show up every day. And if you try to force per perfection, you're never going to release anything. You're never going to list anything. You're never going to buy anything. Just get started. Sell everything around your house. You can always buy it back again on eBay. What do you think, Glenn? <laughs> uh, I think well, also what comes into play, I think, is like cost of living, like cost of living in general, too. Like if you live in like Cincinnati, Ohio or something, I mean, it's like totally different than if you live in California, um, then, you know, I think yeah, cost of know. Living, <laughs> then it's then it's totally different. Uh, but El Paso too, like I think what also what helped me a lot was I could quit that full time job because I had, you know, money saved from that. But at the same time, um, I milked it with the parents, you know, I was like, I'm just going to stay here. I don't care if I look lame. I just want to. uh you know, try to build, really build up money, make money and do, try to figure something out afterwards and what I want to do with it. And just kind of going through that struggle other than just the financial part, but just also, you know, just knowing you have to be patient with the whole thing. Absolutely. It takes some time and um, cost of living is definitely ridiculously different. Um, and it, it also in the middle of the country, there's, there's more distance between the stores, st stores, stores, in my opinion, uh, just stores. looking at the different, stores. you know, here it's like, you know, when Glenn and uh, Ken visited me, first of all, it was uh, very cold because I don't spend money on heat. So <laughs> it's very important. You definitely want to maximize your dollar, uh, make it go as far as possible. But we were able to hit nine stores in like an hour because they're all really close. But I don't think it's the case in other parts of the country. Some people drive 45 minutes to one Ross. Yeah. You know, it's different. There is no Ross in Ohio. No Ross. <laughs> um, well, let's go into Joel and Noel. What do you guys think as far as how much money do you need to run a full-time gym? You guys, you guys are busy because you're parents, but what do you think? Hey, I think that you need to know your numbers. Um, number, your number game, I, feel, I think is very important to knowing your game and knowing what you're doing. If you have 500 items listed, you need to know your sell through rate and you need to know your average sale price and you need to know your return on investment. Um, and once you get a good grasp on those, then I feel like you can figure out how much money you will need um, or how much, how many items you're gonna need listed at that, at your rate if you know your numbers before you can quit your job. But if you don't know your numbers, you don't know how much you're making, you don't know how much profit you're making, um, you're just gonna be a feather in the wind. A feather in the wind. <laughs> Noel, what do you think? How much money if you're trying to, well, you guys, you guys are a reselling family. Yes, yeah, so. How much capital do you think you need to support your family? Capital, mm -hmm. well, I will say that um, for a little bit, Matt and I were both doing this full time and um, he, it was, we have two kids and it really went downhill during the summer because we weren't, both of us weren't putting as much time into it with the kids home. Um, and like Helene was saying about knowing your numbers, I hadn't really learned all the things that I know now. Like I'd never paid attention to my store value. Um, and I think that's important. I was just really focused on listing as many items as I could, but not really paying attention to ASP or um, how much I was building each week. So um, he ended up getting a job in the fall. And I will say it's so much easier having him gone, like having, <laughs> he might be watching. 
Uh, um, <laughs> how do I come back from that? Um, having, wait, what was I going to say? It's um, so much easier having him. Oh, having a, a check coming in and not just relying fully on eBay. That was super stressful. And I, we do plan on going back to it, but I know I want to have my, my store value actually double what it is right now before we ever do. Mm-hmm. I think I just think that your numbers are really important because like the boys were saying every state like uh every state is different like it's gonna be it's more expensive to live in DC than it was Atlanta so if you know how much money you need then you need to figure out how much money you're making on eBay how much <clears throat> how many items you need to have listed at your current um, ROI and ASP before you can really make a decision to quit your job. And when you first start, before you quit your job, you should meet a bunch of resellers in person. So you, if you can meet somebody in the flesh that makes a full-time living on eBay or Amazon, it's great because you can actually pick their brain. And I think it's an awesome opportunity to talk about our event in a couple of weeks. Um, I think you guys should all come visit. We have over... I don't know. There's just from every corner of the United States, you have people who make a full-time living reselling and you can just sit and absorb by osmosis, all the amazing knowledge and different ideas, because there's over a hundred streams of income from the people who are speaking the people who are coming. There's so many different ways to make money when you're on your own. Another thing that everyone in this group does is we make money on more than just eBay. So it's important to diversify your income so that you're not as, so that you can really focus. And in my opinion, what do you guys think? Well, I'm all for it because um, I like to mix in uh, merch and then working for my family business, eBay, and then, you know, what I make from YouTube. So I think I'll well, I combine all four of those. Um, and just in case one of them goes down, like you never know, anything can happen at any time. Or um, uh, I mean, more than likely, probably like YouTube and merch would go down before eBay, I think because of like rules, like money wise. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so I think that that way it's a little bit different, but I think eBay, you're probably a little bit safer, but I like to just have different things. You never know. Anything can happen. I mean, I, go ahead. No, I think there's a building phase that everybody needs to understand too. And there is a, a maturity a kind of like level that you need to get to before you start diversifying. Because uh, one of the things that I noticed, you know, just now, just now with eBay or e-commerce, a lot of the brick and mortar uh, successful businesses were focused on one lane on what they were doing. Sometimes a lot of people, since we have a lot more choices now, we tend to take on everything, Poshmark, Amazon, eBay, Mercari, and everything. And what happens is your focus gets divided. Once your focus gets divided, you're automatically going to be average at all you do. And that will actually cost you not to be successful. Um, my take is take the big risk now, go all in now, <clears throat> because the more you focus on one platform, the quicker you grow and the, the more expert you become or you actually mm -hmm. master one skill. And then you can trans transfer your skills and knowledge to a different platform because whatever you're thinking, it's business strategy, it's business structure, all the business that I've, all the strategy that I'm applying are strategies that I've learned from other businesses. So I, I, my biggest thing is at least give one platform a year, give it your all, all in. And a lot of say like, what if you fail? What if you da, 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 da? What if it doesn't work out? Worst case scenario, we can go back, get a job and rebuild again. But yep. the hardest part is, is trying to juggle four things at a time and three years has passed. You haven't mastered one of them. That's Absolutely. Such a waste of time for me. There's nothing more practical than an eBay business, in my opinion, because the physical products business is broken. Because ideally, it would just go from whoever makes it to whoever buys it. But there's like three or four middlemen in between there, and you know, there's opportunity there to make money. So I think there's nothing more practical. If you go all in on eBay for a year, I mean, nobody would advise against that. <laughs> like it just, you learn every single thing along the way. And if you start with your own goods, since the cost of goods is zero, essentially not for taxes, for taxes, it's whatever the market value is. Just so you guys know, 
if you sell your own stuff, you can mark the cost as whatever the market value is. When you're just getting started, don't panic. You know, get some stuff selling first. But again, you can make some mistakes when you first sell stuff around the house, which is very important because learning shipping can take a little bit of time and you really just want to be patient. Give yourself some some time to really get the eBay juices flowing. Mm -hmm. I also think eBay is one of the more intricate of the platforms if you want to di diversify and if you can learn eBay and get those skills down first, like Ken was saying, that was exactly what I was going to say too. Um, I think it's important to focus, especially if you're just starting out reselling, um, to focus on one platform and get it down and under your belt first. But if you can get eBay down, then it's very easy to cross over to Poshmark and Mercari and let go and Craigslist and merch and YouTube. There's so many options out there, but don't, if you're, especially if you're just starting out, do not try to take them all on at once. Like focus on one. I would probably pick eBay first. Um, I want to point out one more metric before um, we move on to maybe some more fun questions. If you guys want to put some questions in the chat, we'd be happy to answer them. But the question that I want to answer, or the metric I want to address today is profit listed per day. So not how many items do you list or what the dollar amount is. It's more like the profit that you list per day. So as an example, if you list 10 items for $30 profit, that's $300 profit listed a day. And if we do that over time, every day consistently, eventually you should make $300 profit. I think people get too caught up in how many listings they do or how much revenue they put up. It's just so important to look at the bottom line. What do you net at the end of the day? And if you have that number in mind, you could tell anybody in this group what your average profit listed is per day. And we can probably guess your income. So, you know, that's just so important to look at it that way because, you know, you'll start to realize, wow, if I list 100 items at $3 profit, it's the same as 10 for $30 profit, right? Or if it depends, sometimes it's multiple quantity. There's just so many variables. And when you guys ask us questions, give us as much backstory as you can because it's hard to answer when people say, what should I sell to make a living? It's just too general. We don't know your situation. We don't know where you live, how much capital you have, what you like to sell, what your passions are. And we can go into, you know, just what do you guys think of thinking about profit listed per day? Or do you use something totally different? Let's start with uh, Noel. What do you think? Can you, can you repeat the question? Sure. You so <laughs> do you, do you think about it like as in how much profit are you listing a day? Or do you think about how many listings per day? Or how do you... How do you create your resale day? Yeah, I, I flipped. I used to be just how many listings I was getting up and I would shoot for between 50 to 100 and they were mostly like $10 profit items. But now I'm focused on um, the profit per day. I, I my, my goal is between 50 to $100 profit items, at least 10 items a day. And I'm getting there slowly. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ken, do you look at it per profit? Do you look at daily items? How do you look at it for your productivity per day? So as far as now, I actually kind of like honed in my, you know, percentage profit already. So I am netting around 50 to 55% net profit. So what I'm actually looking at right now is I need to, in, I need to list more than what I sell. So for example, last week I sold 70 items. This week, I need to at least cover 70 or more. So that's how I mm. look at things. Because, because the thing is, um, my sourcing has restraints already. I'm not picking up anything. You know, I have uh, really tight criteria on what I pick up. So I just need to replenish number-wise or listing-wise. Because, I mean, again, I built in the uh, estimated profit already in there. So that's my... I mean, that's how I grew. I just need to list more than what I sell. That is such a great point. You can also just, if you sell two a day, list three a day, your store will grow. If you have yeah, to sell exactly two a day, so. list one a day, your store will shrink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And try oh, to list a, for at least the same profit or more. Don't yeah. sell three. That's a great point too. Don't sell three $50 items and then list five $20 items. Exactly. Wow. Great point. Great point. Because um, that doesn't count. 
No. You can't sell three um, guitars and then replace it with three Beanie Babies. Yeah. Not gonna work. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, go find a job. What do you think, Jill? How do you look at your resale day? So I, I too have been, I've been getting a lot pickier, especially because I'm being more real, realistic with my abilities with having three kids and a dog and a traveling husband. So for example, my, I have maybe a hundred less listings than I did six months ago, but my store value is the same. Mm. Um, so my, I will still list some, um, lower dollar items if, if they're mine, um, because it's easy and it's no big deal if, if I think if it's worth my time, but besides that, I'm trying to, everything I've listed this week has at least a $50 profit margin. Amazing because time is worth a lot of money to me. It is. I also want you guys to factor in, um, it takes a lot of time to package items. So when you look at the items, like for example, some items may take a half an hour to an hour to package, depending on how fragile or large they are, or if you need to go get a box, all that time matters. So start taking a journal, in my opinion, of how long it takes you to do things. And then you can ask a third party, one of us or your friend or your mom or your dog, and to look over the analysis and they'll be able to tell you, well, you spend way too much time researching or way too much time shipping because you only, we all have the same amount of hours in the day and you're trying to list as much as possible, dollar amount wise, profit wise. So really take, take note in a journal of what's going on. I used to spend way too much time researching, way too much time, especially on like a Ralph Lauren sweater, like, mm -hmm. no, like, unless it's a rare item, I've learned quickly not to s just very quickly look at actives, compare it to solds, go for middle high of the, you know, middle of the road, a little bit higher is what I do to give myself room for sales and best offer and discounts. Um, and I, reduce my listing time drastically just by doing that and by simplifying my listings. I used to think I was writing for a magazine when I wrote my listings and now I just copy and paste my title into the description. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, done. I got so that plan. I just copied the title. There's a good yeah. question in the chat. What is your average ASP? That's a good question. So ASP is average sales price of the item in your store. Why don't we start with Glenn? What do you think? I have to go through my stuff. I don't even have anything ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually doing a merch. I just woke up. Where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to answer the past questions. <laughs> you can go with Ken. <laughs> oh, uh, my ASB last week was 111. Let me see. Mine's 53 bucks. So half of this, half of Glenn's, or I mean Ken's. 53 bucks. What do you guys think? Joel, Noel, do you guys know? Um, yeah. Mine thir was 34 last week, which is up from 21, but I want it to be 50. Oh, that's a good jump. That's, that's a, a great jump. You can. That's a big jump. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I haven't done mine since December. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you, you, and and again, like I, I reviewed the top 100 stores on my YouTube channel. 80 of them have an average sale price of 20 bucks. So most people have high volume cheap items. Okay, just like as a business owner, you can choose either way, right? If you are running a business and you want to order things that come to your house, the profit, the, the ASP and the profit margins are going to be lower than if you go hunting. If you go out there and hunt whales, you can get much higher ASP. You know, but it's not going to come to you. Ken can't order $80 profit items from home. It doesn't work that way. Well, it can, but it's just pretty challenging. Yeah. Um, what's the best way to calculate average sale price? You take the total, you know, let me put the link in the chat. You take the total amount that you have listed, divided by how many items you have. 
that's the um, easiest way. So I'll put the link in the chat. Um, quantity. Quantity. So for example, I have roughly a hundred thousand items, a uh, hundred thousand listed in this store, divided by two thousand items. That's fifty bucks to give you a rough idea. Oh my gosh, my computer is still thinking. I was also gonna say, I guess to um like put yourself in the position to make the money that you want by um i used to source with this other guy and he was used to like his goal was like a thousand dollars a day um that he wanted to make in profit and so like i remember at it was a combination between like ebay and fba and i remember it was like i think it was like 10 p.m we still need, maybe needed like a couple more walmarts to go to but at one point it just seemed like he was kind of like forcing the issue Cause it's like, I really want to get to this thousand. So now we got to keep going, keep going, keep going until I hit that point. Mm. And you also don't want to like force the issue to where you're making mistakes. <clears throat> like right. you just, you're buying it because you want to hit that goal, but is this item really a good item or not? So Absolutely. you kind of have to figure that out too. Such a great point. Uh, and I think it also matters with the budget. That's why a lot of people, I think when you get started with a limited budget, it can be a good thing. It can be a blessing because you have to be picky. If you have unlimited money, you can buy whatever. You can buy a $1 profit item that may not sell. And later you have to launch at a loss. For sure. I mean, I experienced that when I started. I mean, I barely had like bad buys because I over-researched more of them. Now that, you know, I can buy more, I think I've, I mean, even me and Glenn, we went out to out hustled. We got frustrated and stuff like that. We started buying crap. That happens. That happens. Thinking. And I just went to go eat. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to say, you guys, you guys have the. So many people don't go to many stores, and I want to say, you know, I talk to a lot of full-time resellers, and the average number of stores for people who make six figures, okay, people who net 100k or more doing retail arbitrage or thrifting, they go to 50 stores a week. That's no joke. That's a lot of stores. So imagine how much good stuff you're going to run into. If you try to squeeze that inventory out of 10 stores, you're going to be, you're going to be forced to buy J crew. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Nobody likes J crew. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I wasn't going <laughs> to tell on you. <laughs> I'll confess. <laughs> Um, buy, there's some, some, some J crews. It's fantastic. I buy it for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't really resell it, but I even, I take Betsy with me even, and we'll go to multiple stores in one day. So it's, mm -hmm. it's possible for anyone. If I can survive five stores with a four-year-old, a feisty four-year-old, <laughs> anybody can do this. I mean, if, Glenn, if I can... survived, Glenn survived sourcing with me. We did 35 See, stores exactly. in one day. <laughs> and it's the same as betsy 35 in one day yeah from 9 what? to 9 a.m to 1 a.m oh my god wait, wait oh, how does it go how does it go that long the ross doesn't close till one yeah. what Not here wow For real? No, some some rosses you gotta check different rosses close different times that's some, insane uh, yeah yeah well, you, you ever find stuff that late Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them actually restock late at night and you get home runs. I mean, me and Glenn, our last store, we had we had six minutes before they closed. We <laughs> hauled a full cart. And this guy's like, I just put it out there. It's like, thank you. <laughs> that's for me. That's, yeah, that's literally that. insane. Yeah, because they restock for the next day. You know, usually there's not a lot of customers late at night. Right? I didn't realize you could th you could retail arbitrage that hard. <laughs> 35 in one day how many did we do what the the houston one yeah yeah that was the most it was the the 30 or 35 35 in one yeah. day yeah and then we did it for three days straight so we're at, i think we did 128 in three days no well that's more than 35 a day well yeah yeah they're super fast, though. They're super uh -huh. fast sources. I, I know. I went with them. Nine stores in an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, and Chris was slow. And, and I was taking forever. <laughs> I was taking forever. They were, like, done. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's see. I mean, Glenn has done it more than me, and, you know, I, I have to keep up. He's done it for five years. I mean, back in what, Glenn? 1982? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when God was a child. 
<laughs> That's the other thing that I learned from Glenn and Ken is that I, Noelle and I used to, well, we're still slow. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but we used to be slower because we thought that the Holy Grail was hiding under one of those shelves and one of those racks. And if we left, we, would yes. so we looked <laughs> very carefully at absolutely everything in every store. Yeah. And we figured, we learned that we don't, you don't have, you don't have to do that. You can, there's money to be made without thinking that you're going to find the Holy Grail in one of the stores you're in. If you leave, it's okay. I also want to point out that um, it's about 50, 50 people on the coast and the people in the middle and in the middle, the people that I interact with, the majority of them source online. So if you live in Kansas and there's no, nothing within 50 miles of you, you can't go to 35 Rosses in one day. You've got to learn how to buy stuff online. Use sites like uh, govdeals.org and buy the government seizure stuff. Hopefully there's a drug dealer in your area that, <laughs> um, that didn't, pay taxes and his stuff gets seized and you can buy it at the auction. So make sure you're aware of what's going on in your area, auctions, online arbitrage. eBay has 800 million listings. Okay. There's gotta be two or three in there that you can buy that are undervalued the reflip. And I think it's important to look at different, different platforms. I bought a pair of brand new Sorel boots that have MSRB of hundred bucks for 11.95 today wow. on Poshmark. Okay. So the lady's asking 10 plus shipping. She has 10 plus shipping. I offered five plus shipping. There's a $3 fee. She, she netted $2 on her brand pair. <laughs> and she put, thank goodness, I'll get them out today. And I was like, wow, <laughs> incredible customer service for a $2 profit, $2 of revenue. But, I mean, it, it can happen. So just go out there, source. My guess is this is an ex-boyfriend. So she was launching these boots. So <laughs> I like to go in there and look because, you know, you can always pick up good deals. <laughs> there might be, you better look in the seams. There might be something hiding. It might be bad juju. I know. <laughs> we'll look. Look at all the nooks and crannies. Uh, let's see. Also, I do want to point out Another thing that's just, it's just so interesting. When you look at successful resellers, they kind of work in small teams. Like, you know, Ken and um, Glenn, they're actual friends. So it's important because you can text, you can bounce ideas off each other. What do you think of this jersey? Oh, bro, what are you thinking? No way I'd buy that jersey. I'm going to get it anyway and prove you wrong. Whatever. These conversations <laughs> need to happen so that you can level up. You can't you level up so much slower on your own. Yeah. And Noelle and I are actual sisters. Oh, actual? <laughs> Even though our last names are different. I know, yeah, it's very weird. confusing. And they don't rhyme. Your first names don't rhyme, which is very <laughs> That's not that, bo funny. that bothers me. It's not funny. <laughs> they don't start with the same letter, and they don't rhyme. No, I refuse to rhyme with her. It's not going to happen. Noelle and Noelle. Noelle and Noelle. No. Ken Only likes to call five. us that, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> let's see i actually didn't realize reezy went live at the same time that was not on purpose no, uh, this, they, were, this call, they were under, they were under yeah, reezy went live earlier yeah. oh this call is usually um on sundays but if you guys are in the chat hopefully you're coming to see, see us in kansas city you can still get your tickets at resellerfam.com it's gonna be fun it's gonna be amazing. Let's see. Epic. If you sell bar if you sell books, would Barnes and Noble be a good place to source? I would say no. They sell retail. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the retail arbitrage game in the book games is huge. Uh, I don't know. I think toys. I've, yeah. I've gotten a few bolos. Uh and don't give away all of our secrets. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Way to go, Hustlebee. It was actually Carlos. Carlos uh, oh. sent a photo one day. And he's like, go to your Barnes and Nobles real quick. And as soon as I got there, everybody bought it already. I was like, what? Yes. Way to go, uh, Carlos. Yeah, so make sure you have friends that will tell you like 30 minutes late. And then not tell them. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes late. And, then, know, go, and right? then go on YouTube and tell the whole world. I know. Have you guys heard about Bitcoins, this new thing? Yeah. <laughs> 
it's, it's so cheap. It's so cheap right now. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, um, my my cryptocurrency went from five thousand to one uh, fifteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's thirteen hundred now. <laughs> oh, winning. <laughs> You need to go a lot more Rosses. Yeah. Way more. Let's see. Mirna says, I buy storage units, only the good ones. How do you know they're the good ones? <laughs> you found a fur coat in one that you sold for 1500 and 27 items that made 3000 That's boss. Can you, can you please DM us how you know they're the good ones? Because that would be excellent. <laughs> She said, that would be excellent. she said she was in Colorado, so maybe next time hustle will be storage wars. That's true. Maybe yes. it won't be storage roads. Uh, Amazon people have R aid toys at Barnes and Noble for years. There you go. Yes, Barnes and know. Noble is a hot spot. <laughs> oh no. You gotta act quick though, because they don't restock. Really? Do you sell and if you put them on hold, they don't save them. Oh, Do you no. guys sell books on eBay? That's a good question. Um, a lot of people sell books only on Amazon. I don't know. I'm sure there's some good eBay flips sure. also. I've Probably. sold books on eBay. I mean, there's always yeah. money to be made on books if you get it for like a dollar or two. Mm -hmm. Oh, lot, book, lot books. Noelle taught me that, um, especially when school's starting to lot of books, like all in the, the same grade level. Yeah, you can get them at the bins really cheap and savers is this unique thrift or whatever it's called they always have good deals on their books they're like 50 cents or something i don't know i'm not a book person 50 cents might be expensive people do books on both in the chat yep that is awesome I sell That's my FBA restricted textbooks on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. textbooks are gold. Yeah. People seem to take their kids a lot and bribe them to do things. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. for sure. So, you well, have to. You have don't, to. Leave, don't leave the house without a lollipop. Does that work? For, for like three minutes. Oh, bribe works, man. That's how I became a really good student. My parents always bought me a pair of shoe every time I... That's a great them. idea. I guess kids don't do things for free. They're too smart for that. They know they can manipulate yeah. whatever they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, at least our parents get something out of it. I mean, right. they wow. always come up on the stage and put medals on our head, on our neck, or on our neck, so... <laughs> Juan in the chat sold books on etsy that's that's gangster i don't know how you do that you, you do you bedazzle the cover first because then probably worth a lot more um vintage vintage oh vintage also um oh i just sold a lot of vintage books i probably under, i probably shouldn't say that because i probably didn't sell them for what i should have i only paid 15 dollars for them and i sold them for 175 Whoa. Homeschooling books sell for good money. I didn't realize homeschooling books are different than regular books. Yeah. What do you they think? Are. What's the difference? If you if you if you educate your kids at home, is it different? Yeah. Oh yeah. I did it for a year. Is it how different is it? No. Uh, they just have their own their whole own text series. Like it's not the same as what they their, the their pictures school. are only one kid. There's no there's no seatmates. So that's so yeah, sad. No playground, you know. I mean, there's playground, but there's only one kid. It's just sad face kid the whole yeah. time. Like the, the, yeah, the sports are gonna be like tennis, golf. There's no team sports, and they're both racquetball. That's very smart. Wow, people say they're really expensive. The homeschooling books. They, oh, they are. are. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. I don't know about any of that. All right, let me put up a Craigslist ad. Well, what is so if you homeschool, <laughs> does that mean you can is that is that a good alternative for an eBay family? Um no, no because then you can't do anything. Yeah, you can't teach you them. <laughs> you don't get well, oh. I I'm lying. Some well, people make it work. Homeschool them when they reach like 13 or something like that. And then they can help with eBay. That's my school. plan. Oh. <laughs> But now when they're little, you want them at school so you can. Yeah, yeah. you want to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I paid money to send Betsy to preschool so I could have <laughs> nine hours a week. Then this is this is very informative for me. I don't know about any of this. 
Jennifer's treasures was homeschooled and won't be homeschooled or will and won't homeschool her kids. That's very interesting. Uh, Why? Why is that? What's what's the downside of being homeschooled? Your mom is your prom date. Other than that, <laughs> I, think, I think it's challenging. Let's see. The social life is hard, I'm sure. You just have your iPad. You don't need friends. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. See. You don't Too even much need books. Just give iPads. All, like. all of my friends live in my computer. Yeah, they should. Um, I know this guy that that <laughs> that um he. I, 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 it was on a Facebook group. It said, if you need any uh, books for college, DM me. I can get a PDF for you. Oh, my gosh. That seems like a thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, you got to pay him like, you know, 10 bucks. <clears throat> but instead of buying like a $50, wow. $100 book. Shelter. And like Glenn said, Shelter. just get an iPad. Uh, Shelter too much. See, I felt like I was sheltered a lot as a child because my parents didn't let me do anything except for study. So I had mm-hmm. severe FOMO. Um, mm-hmm. So I literally took 10 years to recover from FOMO. So I Aww. think it was not not good to be sheltered too much. Noelle and I still haven't recovered from ours. No. Me too. Obviously. <laughs> Clearly. Let's see. <laughs> Shay was homeschooled for high school and she graduated when she was 15 and she went to oh college when she God. was 17. Wow. wow. Um, you PDF textbooked your entire bachelor's degree. What? See? There you go. There you go. <laughs> it must be such a slap in the face to be a teacher and you make all your money on ravaging people on textbooks and you see some kid in the fourth row with the PDF of your book. Right. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> Well, you didn't want to pay the 300 bucks at the bookstore? Jerk. So I've heard of, of people like basically buying a book on Amazon, photocopying it, and then launching their illegal versions of it for 10 bucks. That makes sense. Oh, we did that in uh, in college. It was illegal, but um, I had I had, I had my uh, friends photocopied it for me because my parents would give me money for Are we the past the statute of limitations? Yeah, they uh, they actually gave me money for the book, and then I'd pay uh, I'd pay half the cost for a photocopied book, and then I. Someone in the chat's gonna report you, hustle bee. I pocket the I pocket the rest. You're going down. You went went to get him. I was I was actually uh it was one of my entrepreneurial journey. (laughs) It was in another country. It doesn't count here. Yeah, I can't get sued over here. Doesn't it doesn't count? They're gonna extradite you. (laughs) Well, I changed my name for your textbook hustle name is different yeah my name's different already okay i want to i want to run this i want to run this uh ebay um scandal by you guys not scandal that's the wrong word um conspiracy right, me, you guys ready let me log off first are we talking about scandal <laughs> that's right. so what do you think of people say that if you change a certain amount of the listing it's the same thing as sell similar because eBay recognizes it as a new thing. So I wonder if you put all new pictures in or you change the title, like enough words, or you change the price. What do you think would trigger the eBay thinking this is something new and they want to boost it in the best match? Because today, at my mastermind calls this morning, I literally edited 2,000 listings in the Husky store and I have like 30-something sales. And this happened before in... Um, when I went to Chicago, when I met you guys, mm-hmm. um, I, I edited 2000 listings that morning and I had, had, it was like, my thing was going off like crazy, but I went in and did a lot of major changes in there just because I was, had some extra time. Did you end them first? And no, or you I have a hundred percent good till canceled. So you just hmm. revise, you basically just revise it. But I did major revising today and yeah. it, it worked too. I don't know if you're just decreasing it by a dollar or increasing it by a dollar would have a big enough effect. It could be from the algorithm standpoint of view, it could be a few points that you need to hit, right? Maybe right. adding a photo, uh, mm. revising description, uh, title, or price, you know, something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I wish we knew, but that's the beauty of this thing. I, I wish we knew. Going up and down by a dollar frequently to keep their. I just wonder if that's added. enough, or you need to go like $5, or you need to go percentage. Maybe we can, mm. uh, we can test it. Everybody Let's test it. Different. Yeah. Maybe when eBay comes to our event, we can ask for some insider information. I've also ended listings yeah. before and just 
so uh, clicked on sell similar and that's similar yeah yeah we do that a lot um when when i did the uh uh 30 day before i went to good deal canceled yeah. I, I ended everything and then kind of like relisted it with a few modification yeah and uh I mean, it seemed to work, so I don't know. Um, it could be. Uh, somebody said, uh, my theory is when you save the changes, uh, it is interrupted by Cassini as a new listing. Probably because at the end of the oh. day, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, algorithm or, you know, any yeah. about changes. It's not like a human that says like, oh, it's the same shoe or it's the same shirt because there's a thousand of the same shirts that are keyword differently but why are they ranked differently too such a good point all of this college education when we end up selling on ebay well here's the thing you can you can i think you should sell on ebay for the rest of your life because there's something like internally satisfying about launching something into the universe and it arrives at somebody's house i think it's just like Gary Vee even talks about the fact that he's making a lot of money, but he still gets an insane amount of satisfaction going to a garage sale and flipping something. I don't know if he actually does do that, though. <laughs> he says that like he's a true salesman at heart. He needs to share his story. <laughs> but does, he, does he even sell? When he talks about reselling the resellers, we're like, are you sure? Because it doesn't sound like we don't do that. Hey, d <laughs> like, go list this real quick. I know, exactly. d Rock's <laughs> doing all the work. <laughs> um the price change shakes things up someone says this thing in the chat um i agree you can also raise the price you get mm -hmm. better perceived value um there's no reason why you have to only go down or the uh, good old trick that raise i mean price it uh price it high and then run a sale and mm -hmm. then every other sale yeah every other day run a different kind of sale natalie is talking about a set it and forget it uh, mentality there are some items in my opinion that are set it and forget it but ebay as a platform in general i do not think it's set it and forget it yep i don't think so uh well yeah. no we we saw gary be on the garage show and he's like how to make 500 dollars in 10 minutes and when you look at it you're like where <laughs> like he, he you know like we sell the same stuff he found it doesn't right you know. and then he was like asking his brother didn't we spend thousands of hours looking at sold and he's like no <laughs> I think we, AJ didn't, was the real, we didn't spend real that reason. much time looking we looked at souls but not that much time <laughs> so uh no it does you, not change it doesn't charge you an, a new uh insertion fee if you just edit the price someone no it doesn't that's a yeah. good question but if you end your listing and do a sell yes, somewhere it will mm-hmm Uh, I also heard that offers um, give you a boost. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, I think and all option that eBay gives you is a boost. And if so someone we, emails you about an item, so many times I've had someone email me about an item, like, would you consider taking this or going back and forth? And while I'm emailing the person, it sells. Someone what do you else. think about um, is counter offering another hit versus declining? Oh, yeah. The, the I reason that counter. The reason I ask is an immediate decline for me has a higher likelihood of getting a counter offer. I know, hmm. I agree. If you decline right away, you get an immediate counter offer sometimes because people think it's a auto decliner or something. Right, right. But if you wait a while and then decline, they're like, okay, buddy. I actually oh, um, decline. At least I actually tell me no up front. I, now I made it a rule that to always counter offer. And then uh, if they're just, you know, kind of like giving you the most lowball offer all the time, mm -hmm. I just, you know, all of a sudden say, I mean, eventually they'll run out of offer or you can ignore them or I'll, I'll put a message on my offer and say, this is the best I can do. Mm. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, I always leave a message. Mm -hmm. Your offer is insulting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather die than accept your offer. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you gotta have a little bit of fun, like you know. Yeah, you could be like you've been blocked. Know, you've been blocked forever. Yeah, I know. I know where you live. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't even sell it to you for full price. I like to put in. All the <laughs> That's a good one. 
people are are because if you're if you don't have fun trolling your customers once in a while, you're not gonna make it. He makes a bit of a grind. You've got to. I, I get I get the most trolls on my my Cincinnati Bengals jersey. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that's a no shocker. wonder. Yeah, I get like a twenty dollar offer. It's like they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think the counter offer counts against you. I think the counter offer helps you. I think all offers count as activity. The I thing think, is, yeah. I know that declining definitely ranks lower than counter offering for sure, mm-hmm. because obviously you're counter offering, you're working with the customer. That's why eBay, I have an item, a Patagonia jacket that I don't have best offer on, and you can still make a best offer because eBay has decided that they want to allow that back and forth. It's one of those items that you don't get to not have best offer. You know, so I just let people know I'm firm on the price. Sorry. Um, it just, eBay likes to create that. But I just think an immediate decline results in a counteroffer. I mean, that's how, um, you know, in sales and in negotiation, if somebody says, instead of um, $100 for that jacket, how about 50 If you say, uh, and you hesitate, that means you're considering the $50 offer. Right, right, right. But if you're like, no way, then it's like, oh, okay, then I'm not in the ballpark. How about 80 Mm. you know like Uh, like, get out of here how about 94 then you take it (laughs) (laughs) the guy said guy said probably even uh, opening your app is a an activity (laughs) it's true opening your app every if you're you know i'm on the one setup program half when i wake up and half when i go to sleep let's see (laughs) you bought a unit for 600 dollars with vintage items paintings vintage electronics you don't have to sell. Yeah, I would say when you're in the storage auction game, you need a truck and you need people because you can't sell all of it yourself unless you're a genius. You want to know people who sell different kinds of things so you can offload it and only sell the things that you want because like I can't imagine buying like a year or two years or three years worth of someone's belongings, sometimes a lifetime of their belongings. Like You're going to get the full spectrum. You can't be an expert in everything. Um, you you counter low ballers with the ex, with the listing price. See, you gotta have a little more um, jab, like a cent lower. Yeah, I never I never counter the exact amount back. Five dollars cheaper. That's what I always my go to. Does yeah. declining an offer mess with the algorithm of your store? I think declining your offer is is always bad unless you can do it right away. Like within seconds. Within seconds, because people just get the. Um, I think it's an or, auto be, or basically just put an auto decline when you're trying to do that. But does does the auto decline mess up your algorithm too, though? I, I mean, I think it's like not having a best offer. You yeah. know. I just auto decline like twenty percent of the cost. For example, I mean, for the listing price. For example, like it's a hundred dollar shoe. I usually put $20 uh, auto decline just for people that try to mess with you or just trying to. Yeah. Like, uh, I thought you meant the opposite. Like you decline everything under 80 bucks. I'm like, man, that's steep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what is a reasonable offer for you on an item that you have listed at a hundred? Like if somebody offers me yeah. 70, I'm not insulted. No, no, no. Even, no. even 60, I, I, I play with them because mo- there has been some, so many times I was able to get him up to like 80, 80 or 85, something like that. I'm cool with that. You know, people say they're insulted by 50% um, off. I offer 50% off and I get people accept. That's why I keep doing it. <laughs> if no people didn't accept it, it wouldn't start that low. Well, it's the reseller's <laughs> fault then. <laughs> it's the reseller's fault. Yeah, for accepting yeah. it. Bringing our prices down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can't believe that a lady was selling brand new boots for 10 plus shipping. I offered five and she agreed. Yeah, that's I want to know that backstory. I don't know what it is. I want to know her closet name. I know. I should share her closet right now. That was the only item like that, though. Oh. oh. That's, that's why I think it was the boyfriend's. It fell, it fell off. Like, you want to cheat on me? Where are your boots? <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be cool. Giving them away. $3 for them. Here's your $3. Let's see. It really messes with me when somebody offers me 50% and you're running a 20% off sale. Yeah, I just, I have a blanket thank you for no matter what offer. 
Offer me a dollar. Thank you. But I need a little more. <laughs> I need to go away. <laughs> Thank you. But I think it is fun also to say, like, you've been blocked goodbye forever. I think those things are funny. <laughs> They're fun for me, at least. <laughs> it's happened like different times where like they'll they'll send me an offer and then they go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, all right, you know what? This is the lowest I can do. This is it. <laughs> And then they come back and it's still like five dollars <laughs> lower. Yeah. And then I auto decline it. <laughs> yeah, those are the worst. When you're trying to negotiate with them and then like last offer, they always come short, like three dollars yeah. short. It's like, ah oh, no, ah, oh, decline. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no wonder why uh, you, you have a different eBay name than your uh, YouTube name. <laughs> <laughs> right. I get so many unsubscribed. <laughs> it's so smart yeah people are i just you know as people are in the chat are saying some people don't offer best offer and i don't disagree with that model at all i think if you price it right on the money you don't need best offer yeah for sure i've done it both ways in my store i have a mix of everything free shipping charge for shipping no best offer best offer so you know some dude's house pictures versus professional store you just try everything <laughs> you, you have a store you can do whatever you want yeah it's your store right? it's your store exactly. you can run it however there are people who are successful with every single kind of method yeah well, but, but, but they're consistent though like, they're consistent uh, who was your right. friend the uh the bed shit guy no that's ronaldo 92 <laughs> who has since <laughs> changed he has changed his username probably because of my youtube channel that's funny Cause like he he didn't even make his bed. It was like, come on, bro. Like you're gonna take pictures on your bed. You don't even make your bed. Use the use the lighting from the like one yellow light. You know, had to put in his listing. Colors dramatically different than photos. That's <laughs> how you said. No, I'm saying he should have. Cause there's no way that that would have looked like that. It was well, just like. Someone also take photos of the clothes like at the bins. Like they just put it on. The yes. Floor. No, that's a thing. That's yeah. a major no, thing. There's this guy. Jeff sent me today, and Jeff said, dude, this got to be the worst listing ever. Did he, <laughs> Jeff send you that, Glenn? No. <laughs> this guy screenshotted somebody's whole entire listing <laughs> and then used it as a primary photo. That's awesome. <laughs> like, he shot the whole listing. I've never even heard of that. Thing copied the title and I, I mean i couldn't see the price i'm sure he undercut the guy that he screenshot it from <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah. so I have, to, I have to uh get a hold of that listing this is so funny people will tell you a story like it's their birthday and they need a good deal it's true i've forgotten that oh yeah yeah that's true or like i'm on a college budget it's like don't buy this louis vuitton sweater then you know what i mean <laughs> oh, right. Right. you don't need the sweater I know it's like it's all, you're it's good. All I got left, right? It's all I got left in my bank. I'm like, bro, just buy a frozen pizza. You can. Doesn't lose make sense. Parties. I know. Like I've been saving up for this for two years. You can't go a hundred dollars off. <laughs> I always get those ones that are like, "What's the lowest you can do?" Like they don't even try exactly. to negotiate. It just I don't immediately. Know. Like I don't know. Try me. I always respond with, what's the highest you can pay? I always, that's my default. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. Uh... Go, <laughs> no, I do appreciate it, though. If they respond back and forth. I've had four or five back and forth before someone made an offer. Right. I've had, I have used the, the four or five offers that they have all of them before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have. This is your final counter offer. You know, and you're just like, hmm. <laughs> or I like to do this. If you make a low ball offer, I'll be like, oh, thank you for catching it. I listed this too low. And I'll raise the, the price <laughs> higher. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, no, I'll just buy it at what you were asking. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> too late. <laughs> yeah, I actually declined that dude. And that dude's still emailing me. It was the Jordans. And uh, I actually gave it to him for $50 off during Christmas time. Now he's coming back to me all the time. It's like a $400 shoe. No. I'm going to give it to him for $350. i 
Now he's coming back to my listing. I said, I'll take it for 350 And then I actually listed it for 480 already. Awesome. I know. I know. I don't. The thing is with your, it's just so crazy that you're the shopkeeper of your own store. You can do whatever <laughs> yeah. you want. Yeah, you're the manager. You can black people. <laughs> you're you the know, manager. Like, Let me yeah, ask the like, manager. So like, yeah, like the way me and Glenn gets treated. It's like, oh, you can't buy anymore. I'm going to try that. Let me ask my manager. Yeah, yeah oh, like wait. when me. When me and Glenn got denied of a purchase at that Texas store, Glenn was mad. He was like, <laughs> what? Why? Why? Like, we were there paying. And they, I, I guess they saw us together walking in and we were on the different counters. And I said, I even showed our uh, IDs. Like, I'm from Ohio. This guy's from Texas. We're I don't like, even know who the hell this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, we just need to decline this, sir. Decline this. Like, we had like 20 pairs of shoes stock up front. Like, okay. That's we messed have, up. I'm yeah. sorry. So dude. that's why when we get to our eBay store, we're like, no way. You can't buy two. <laughs> you can't combine shipping. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it. The world is crazy, guys. There's just so many ways to deal with it. But I think if you're not having fun with your eBay store, you're not going to make it. It's going to be fun because yeah. it's hard. It's a grind. Getting the, getting enough stuff listed. You know, when, Ken, when I first met Ken, he wanted to get a hundred thousand listed and we, we were both just getting started. We were like, is that even possible? And then <laughs> it's not only possible and you know, lots of people can do it. Just keep doing it. Keep listening. Um, does anybody get satisfaction declining? Uh, I don't get satisfaction. It gives me anxiety because of Cassini. Mm. I would like to sometimes. Take turns getting a giving a good story. Oh, great! Yeah, so you're on a fixed budget. I'm on a maximizing um, income journey. <laughs> I have 17 kids. I have to feed. I know. That's a good. Awesome. That's a good job. I have never replied with a story of my own ever. That would be good. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. I'm struggling. I'm trying to make make my rent. And, uh, I'm struggling. I'm really trying to pay my electricity bill. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Wow, that would be a good story. Let's see. I'm gonna try it. Mirna wants to send me some Don Perignon. What? Let's Bring do it. it. City. Bring it to Kansas City. That's even better. We can share it with all of us. Um, when people say they saw it cheaper somewhere else, I tell them to go buy it somewhere else. Well, I've seen that too. Like, why didn't you oh, buy it then? All the time. then? Why are you bothering messaging me? Go get it there. <clears throat> but then, then you'll answer that and they'll say, well, yours is in better condition. <laughs> right? And you'll be like, oh, shit. Oh. That's more expensive. <laughs> no, I, I mean, this is, I've seen this. It's just the thing. Oh, I've seen it too. Or like, I actually don't have a store near me, but I know if I did, I could go there and get it for cheaper. <laughs> Man, just letting you know, I've gotten the just letting you know your item is priced higher than the market. Okay, That's nice. thank you. I say thank you. I'm not Wait. in a hurry to, I'm not selling this. This is actually a display. What about trades? Yeah. Is that common for you? I do get once in a oh, while, dude. All, almost every day, at least for shoes, almost every day. That it has it, no trades. Oh, I'm on disability. I do hear that. Yeah. I'm be like, you don't, I mean, I'm sorry, but you don't need to. Well, pay. here's somebody said, um, hey, I'm looking for a few items for my friend who had an issue or something. Can you give me a deal on a bundle? And I said, yes. So that yeah. seemed like a legitimate thing. Right. So yeah. I don't know. I did what like. Did they buy? They bought nine items. Well, oh, how many? What, nine? nine? Nine items. Oh, that Did you look crazy. for them on eBay? Are they flipping them? No. <laughs> well, they were just a little bit less. So, like, wow. yeah, I probably would work with people like that's just, you know, 10% off. Something Here's like a good that. question How many people do you guys have blocked? I don't. I don't know how to block. Wow. <laughs> wow. Do you? Somebody teach Ken how to block. I don't. That I think is, I only that have is crazy. like two or three blocked. I don't have a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, two or three. That really, that definitely uh, pissed the manager off. You savage. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Those I are the trolls. I would hate to see that one 
of those two or three people, though, that means you were serious about them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> off the, island. the managers banned them. Yeah. <laughs> Let me find their username. I just put all the people that I banned in the chat for you guys. <laughs> so if you guys want to see, that's about, yeah, that's that's about uh, 50 people that I blocked. That's amazing. Very rare goods. So, that looks like a legit username. Yeah, no, a lot Why of these people. my name on there? A lot of these people are in <laughs> A lot of these people are in the reselling community, so there you go. You're welcome. Um, Thanks a lot. I had somebody offer a dollar on 75 items, and I'm like, who has that much time? Why? They're very bored. Well, that's Dude. why you have auto decline under five bucks. I do. I don't have. That's so smart. I need to do that because people just like, love, yeah, just like love trolling. Offer. Hmm. That's because people know your store name. Hmm. I'm going to ban all of them too. <laughs> Drum. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, I know because people do that. They have Facebook groups where you put in Ooh, that would be a, yes. a blog post. No, it is putting, so putting much traffic. Blog. That would be all your blog. Like block this people. <clears throat> Bad, well, because people are saying that we need a system to rank buyers. Like this person, low ball below their name, generally low ball <laughs> below. Instead of top rated seller. Instead of top rated seller. Scammer. <laughs> <Damn her. laughs> That's a really good idea. I would Negative love that. Negative reviewer, complainer. Because <laughs> there's a really good yeah, website called Text from Last Night or something. There could be, uh, yes. you know, you get messages from last night. Messages. <laughs> Bad, bad eBayer page. Yeah, no, there's that thing. Because you can't leave a negative feedback. I'll put like, um, you know, had to leave a positive feedback, but I had a horrible selling experience. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy message me one time and say, is it too late to change the address? I accidentally sent this to my wife instead of my girlfriend. Oh, my wow. God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you got oh. scammed on Poshmark last week. I got scammed this week on Poshmark, too. Somebody bought an item. Oh, you got major scammed. But but they gave me my money back. Yeah, but now you know to wait three hours. No, I waited three hours. Oh, you did wait three hours. His credit card just took longer than that to cancel, to, to, to hmm. decline. I don't understand why it showed you as payment went through. Yeah. Oh, I know why. Because it was an offer. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's it fuzzy. He offered, three, he offered 300 I accepted the offer. It said, prepare to ship. Here's the label. I waited three hours and one minute, printed it, sent so it out. Three hours they were cool about it. Hours? I didn't know that. Yeah, because um, they, if they cancel it, there's no way to, they can can, they'll still cancel it within the three hours. So if you've already shipped it, Ooh. then. The thing is, where on Poshmark does it say three hours? Nowhere. Nowhere. They won't tell you. So you're gonna get your money back no matter what. They're not right. gonna like leave you hanging. So like. No, they're really good about it. They're good about it. Yeah. Uh, can you scam me for the stuff. Hermes bag? You can try. I would love to get an eighteen thousand dollar payment. Let's try it. Uh, first of all, you have to have a credit card that approves, though. <laughs> So if you have 18 grand on your credit card, go for it. This is what I was worried about, the eBay's authentication service. So let's say that Glenn sends in one of his many Chanel bags, right? Huh? Sends it in and they're like, Glenn, we can sell for 8,400 bucks. And he's like, great. And they're like, we'll give you 60%. Then Hustlebee buys it for 8,400 bucks, refuses the package. Glenn gets his money. eBay gets it back. Doesn't that work? <laughs> Probably. Well, you gotta, when you do that, we gotta do global shipping program. Oh, yeah, global shipping program. Better. Better. Global Let me shipping go back program. To the Philippines real quick. <laughs> yeah, that oh, happens. Um, the person that bought some Kobe's that was destroyed uh, through the shipping, uh, she got her, uh, her money back in the shoes, and I got my money back. Yeah, buyers don't see bad reviews on Poshmark or good reviews, actually. I have no idea if you're a good seller or not. <laughs> I don't know. How, like, how can you read another seller's love notes? It's very confusing. Uh, I definitely recommend for people who want to start e-commerce, do eBay, not Poshmark, if you want to get started. Yeah, do eBay. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> sure, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh. 
every email I get from Poshmark is like, women like you love selling boots. And I'm like, is there really no male sellers? <laughs> you and Ken. That's yeah. true, just us. Dude, I sold like $300 today on uh, Poshmark. Yeah, it says click on the meet the seller and you'll see love notes. Oh, but no, but you have to scroll and find the meet the seller. It's annoying. It's usually at the bottom of their closet. I know, but what if they have hundreds and listings? Then on this very far right hand side of your computer is a bar and you can long hold oh, on. Oh, what? But can you do that on your computer? I mean, your phone? Yeah. Huh. I'll have to play with it and see. So, okay, question. Should I be a woman on Poshmark? Go for it. You can be whatever you want to be. I'm not uh, <laughs> judging. This is true. I'm just wondering if women trust your buying. Closet. You're the do manager. Women, yeah, you're the manager. Do, do women manager. trust buying from right. women? Or do men men like or women like buying from men or women better? Hey. I don't just know put, who I'm buying put, from. Just put Christy as manager. That's true. Wait, can you put I hate you on there? You can. <laughs> what if you leave a hate note? It would be on a different category. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Interesting. No, I, I know I can be a guy. I'm just saying, do I want to represent myself as a woman? Because women might want to buy from another woman because like, Chris, you, know. you can be both too. You know, okay. I don't, I, don't, I, I, I don't care who you are if you have what I want. I have one more gear to grind. Everyone says, ooh, Poshmark is the place to sell men's clothing. There's no one doing it. That's true, but I haven't sold a single male thing. <laughs> Dude, I sold some men's jacket. Uh, I've sold a bunch of men's shoes. Really? I, I crush with women, but not the men. Hmm. Some more the one selling. Hmm. That's what I mean. You're better with women then. Oh, with women. so the thing is, the women are actually buying my items for their men. For their husbands. Oh, you can remove any love note. Hmm. I sold three men's items today. What? <laughs> I can be both. Fantastic. <laughs> you can whatever you want to be as the manager. I guess I could wear, do they make clothes that's like one half men's on the left side and women's on the right side? Yep. That's what you call half and half. Do they have that though? <laughs> I think you should take that idea to Shark Tank. I've never seen like Shark a Tank. I've never seen like a shirt with frilly flowers on one side and like camo skulls on the other side. Dude, have a custom for right Kansas yet. City. That will bring in more people. That's such a good idea. Then you can be both. Why choose when you can be both? That's such a great idea. Ask your kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? A guy or a girl? Both. both. <laughs> There's your million dollar idea. Do they have that for restrooms? They oh, have yeah. men, female, either. Do they have both though? Yeah, yeah. They have both. Oh, all gender. All yeah, gender. Yeah, oh, all, all gender includes both genders. And yeah. and four. It. it does. I got, I got it. Both genders can go into all genders. Ooh, I could be a man but identify as a woman. Okay. That's also an option. Oh, I think a lot of people think they're buying the seller's clothes from their actual home closet. That would make sense. That would make sense. Except for mine have a pure white background. Oh, did you see that? 70% of what, sell, what is... Wow. Man's on Poshmark. Mm. Wow. There is some unisex gender. Does that mean gender bender fashion? Like... <laughs> Or Christy. Like Christy. Wow. All right, guys. Well, it's getting kind of late. Are you guys you guys want to keep going or you want to call it a night? Well, no one's falling asleep already. <laughs> it's late on the East Coast. It's my bedtime. That's true. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming. This is the last show. We'll see you guys in Kansas City. Buy tickets at resellerfam.com. You can meet all of us there and Tons of other amazing full-time resellers. Yeah, it, it'll, all of us will be there. It'll be epic. All of us will be there. It'll be a blasty Plus blast. Plus more. Yep. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys at the event.
See you. Sure. See you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.